I'm JD the Media Jack and welcome back. We're gonna look yet again into how to mod a PlayStation Classic. Now stay tuned for the end of the video as I'm gonna give you information as to how you could potentially win the big relative, the newer version, the PlayStation 5, how you can win that system for free right here on my channel. But last time we did this, I showed you how to install AutoBleam onto this PlayStation Classic. Gives you the opportunity to play any PlayStation 1 game on this neat little unit. Now, we're gonna look into how to install the proper software so that you can free up the Player 2 port, but also play any game from any system prior to the PlayStation 1. So let's start off with what do you need? First of all, you need to have a PlayStation Classic with AutoBleam version 1.0 or 1.0.1 already installed onto a thumbstick. If you don't know how to do that, or if you wanna know how to do that, go to my prior video. The link will be in the description below. Secondly, you need ROM files, old video game files, Nintendo video game files, or Super Nintendo, or anything prior to PlayStation 1. Third, you need an OTG cord. What is an OTG cord? Well, I had to get this shipped. An OTG cord, which for whatever reason, some people on the internet have a hard time or just don't want to explain what the hell it is. An OTG cord is a USB mini, male and female, in and out and a spot for you to plug in a USB thumb drive. USB OTG, USB on the go. Don't know why it's such a well-guarded secret on the internet, but whatever. So you need those things. To free up the player two spot on your PlayStation Classic and also plug in the OTG cord, the on the go USB cord, fire up your PlayStation Classic. In AutoBleam, you wanna press select twice. You will see this option here, flash kernel installer. It'll give you actually a bunch of instructions and also things to watch for, but it's not really that pertinent. All you have to do is first of all, do a full backup. This is just in case anything goes sideways. You have a place to fall back onto. This will take a few moments. Now that that's done, you want to flash the kernel. This will make it so that the new cord that you have, this thing that you just got sent in to you or you bought at an electronic store or wherever, can now act as a power cord as well as a place to plug in your thumb drive, freeing up the Player 2 port. Now, if the flash kernel was successful, the screen will go to black. This is where you want to start moving things around. Unplug the power cord. Plug in the on-the-go USB cord. Stick the thumb drive into the OTG cord. Now power up the console. There you go. As you can see, all my games are still here. I'm gonna fire up a little bit of red asphalt just to show you that, yeah, everything still works. And now the Player 2 port is free on the PlayStation Classic. Now, if for whatever reason the install failed, the light on the PlayStation Classic will flash red. To get around this, simply put the original power cord back into the PlayStation Classic, put the thumb drive back into the Player 2 port, and start over again. If the light flashes red even after you've done this, that means that even the backup, the full backup, failed. Unfortunately, this means you're going to have to start from scratch with a brand new thumbstick. Installing other games on your PlayStation Classic. As I stated before, this system here is capable of playing any game that was released before the PlayStation 1. 
not just PlayStation 1 games. What you're gonna to wanna to do now is take your thumb drive and plug it into your computer. That's where your ROM files are. Now, for this example, I'm gonna install Ninja Gaiden 2 and DuckTales. Now, Ninja Gaiden 2 is gonna be with its folder and DuckTales without its folder. As you can see here, I have them on my desktop. What you wanna do is go into ROMs and then find, in my case, because these are NES games, the NES folder, and just drag and drop these games into that folder. Once you've done that, once again, eject the thumb drive. Don't just pull it out of your computer once it's done, eject the thumb drive, otherwise there's a real strong chance it could become corrupt and you'll have to start all the way at square one installing AutoBleam onto a thumb drive. So eject the thumb drive every single time. Plug it back into your PlayStation Classic. This time, of course, we have the OTG cord, the on-the-go USB cord, and now you wanna go to the emulation station. From here, you will see that it gives you options as to what video game system you want to run with. In our case, right now, it's the NES system. As you can see, it shows two games, Ninja Gaiden 2 and DuckTales. Now you notice that DuckTales is right here. I can play it right away, whereas Ninja Gaiden 2 is on a completely separate screen. That is because I installed it with a folder. So this is completely up to you. Folder, no folder, it's completely your call. Now, as I stated before, you can play any game that was made before a PlayStation 1, including, in my case, Super Nintendo. As you can see, I've already installed a couple of games, Mega Man X and Beavis and Butthead for the Super Nintendo. And in the emulation station, it's right here, ready to go. This is gonna be cool. <laughs> 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 To back out of any game in the emulation station or even in auto bleam, just hold down select start. <laughs> and finally, to shut down auto bleam, the PlayStation Classic, don't just turn off the machine with the power button. You want to hold down L2, R2, then it will power down. And that's it. You now have a PlayStation Classic that is capable and able to run and hold multiple video games, not just PlayStation games, but Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Atari, Sega Genesis, really anything before a PlayStation 1. Now, how can you win a PlayStation 5? Simply subscribe to my channel, The Media Jack. Subscribe to my channel. Once it hits 1,000 subscribers, I will make an announcement as to when someone will win a PlayStation 5 during a live stream right here on my channel. It is free for you to subscribe. I really would appreciate it. And I promise you, if you found my channel and you found this content, there has got to be something on my channel that you will also enjoy. Regardless, my name is JD the Media Jack. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been a lot of fun diving into this neat little console, which I've slowly but surely fell in love with. Have a great one.